7. The Dangers of Cave Diving June 25, 2018 Just before dawn on June 25, the SEAL divers enter the flooded Samyak Junction. Their headlamps cast an eerie green glimmer in the murky water. They each carry a single steel cylinder on their back that has been pumped full of compressed or squeezed air. Like soda pop in a bottle, the air inside the tanks is stored at high pressure. In order to make use of it, the divers have to breathe through a regulator, which lowers the pressure of the air as they inhale. The SEALs also carry multiple regulators for backup, and they each wear a buoyancy vest that connects to their air supply. By adding or releasing air from their vest, the SEALs can control how much they float or sink in the water. They each wear a face mask with headlamps to light the way, and a wetsuit to prevent the cold water from wicking away their body heat. The SEALs manage to find the left-hand opening that Vern Unsworth has described to them. The opening is much smaller than they had anticipated and is covered by about six feet, two meters, of water. One SEAL sticks his foot inside the hole. There is space beyond, but the passage has been clogged with rocks and mud. Using a steel pipe, the SEALs hack at the opening, pushing away the debris and widening it. Even then, it's too small for them to fit through with their back-mounted air cylinders. In a highly risky move, they shrug off their tanks and push the metal cylinders ahead of them down the passage. It's hard going through the current, which rushes around the seals with the force of a river and threatens to slam them against the passage walls. If you've ever played with a garden hose and covered up the nozzle with your thumb, then you know that when flowing water is forced through a smaller hole, it speeds up. This is what the seals experience as they try to fight their way through the narrow, jagged passages beyond Sam Yak. Though the Navy seals have spent hundreds of hours diving in the open water, None of them have dived in caves. They certainly have never encountered a cave as hostile to diving as Tam Luang. Underwater caverns can be some of the most spectacular environments on Earth, filled with crystal clear water in every shade of blue and green, dripping with candy land like stalactites. But no matter how clear the water or beautiful the scenery, diving in a cave is dangerous business. Unlike diving in the open sea, where you can easily return to the air above, cave diving takes you far from the surface, down dark and twisting passages. That is where the danger lies. Your body has evolved so well for a life spent in air that you may take it for granted. The lenses of your eyeballs are adapted to see objects through air. Your skeleton effortlessly holds up your body against the weight of 50 miles, 80 kilometers of air in the atmosphere pressing down on you. With no conscious effort on your part, your diaphragm, a muscle beneath your stomach, expands and contracts, which causes your lungs to fill with this precious gas. But the moment you enter the water, all of that changes. Even the world's greatest free divers, people who dive without an oxygen tank, can hold their breath for only about 10 minutes before they have to swim back to the surface. When you hold your breath, your body gradually uses up the oxygen that your cells need to function, and it starts producing carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide builds up, sending a signal to your diaphragm and the other muscles around your rib cage to inflate your lungs. If you keep holding your breath, your diaphragm will spasm painfully. Your body wants to breathe. Your lungs want to expand. Your mouth wants to open and gasp. And if you're still underwater when this happens, you will drown. Cave diving's ultimate danger, of course, is running out of air before you can return to the surface. But there are a hundred ways to get yourself into that grim situation. Your equipment could malfunction, and you could be too far from the cave exit to get out in time. You could get physically trapped in a tight squeeze, or your gear could snag on a rock or on the cave wall. Visibility, how far you can see, is crucial for making your way through a cave and for finding your way out. A dropped flashlight or dead batteries will plunge you into complete and total darkness, leaving you groping along the cave walls. Without light from the surface to orient you, down becomes up, and you can think you are swimming for the exit when you are actually pushing farther inside the cave. Drop lights aren't the only way to get lost. Many cave passages have a layer of fine silt on the bottom that has filtered out of the water over long periods of time. One wrong flick of your fins, and you could stir up a silt cloud that instantly turns the clear water into a murky mess. You could get lost in a cave's labyrinth-like tunnels and spend all your precious air reserves searching for the way out. The Thai seals don't seem to know the number one rule in cave diving. Always use a single, continuous guideline. The first group of divers to enter a cave attach a guideline to the walls and boulders as they go, setting a path that others can follow, while always maintaining a link to the exit. Until that vital line is laid, 
the first group of divers must make their way slowly and carefully. The same stalactites and stalagmites that cause tourists to ooh and ah in a dry cave become real hazards to a cave diver. The jutting formations can tangle a line, or if they are sharp enough, they can slice it clean through. In water as murky as in Tamluang, divers would have no idea they were approaching a rock formation until their head banged straight into it. The cave's passages are also not straight line shots from point A to point B. Tam Luang has plenty of false passageways that jut off from the main system and lead nowhere. Divers can easily make a mistake and follow one of these branches, then smack headfirst into a dead end. They must then either turn around or swim back out, or if the passage is too tight to turn in, slowly back up, inch by inch, until they return to where they started. Incredibly, despite the lack of a guideline, the seals manage to get past Sam Yak and reach an area of higher, dry ground. Here, they see footprints, but no other sign of the boys. Beyond them, they see nothing but a passage flooded with dark water. They can go no farther, or they won't have enough air to make the return trip. When they get back to the junction, they share the bad news with the other seals. Even worse, they realize that the water at Sam Yak is rising higher and higher. And outside the cave, the rain is coming down hard. Rules to dive by. Only by following a strict set of rules have divers been able to safely explore caves. These rules were developed by a young cave diver named Sheck Exley in the 1970s. In Florida at that time, cave diving was becoming more popular and more deadly. So many people had died while cave diving that government officials considered banning it altogether. Exley was disturbed by the number of cave diving deaths. He pored over the accident reports for these dives and discovered that many who died were experienced open water divers who had been unprepared for diving in caves. In fact, it's possible that their comfort in the open ocean had given them a false sense of confidence, which led to their deaths. Exley developed a set of rules that saved lives and that are still followed by cave divers today. One, always use a single continuous guideline from the entrance of the cave throughout the dive. Two, Always use the thirds rule. Use one third of your air supply on the way in, use one third on the way out, and save one third in case you run into an emergency. Three, avoid deep diving in caves. Four, avoid panic by building up experience slowly and being prepared for emergencies. Five, carry at least three lights per diver. Six, use the safest possible scuba equipment. Seven, Avoid stirring up silt on the bottom. Eight, practice emergency procedures with your partner before diving and review them often. Nine, always carry equipment for emergencies and know how to use it. 10, never let overconfidence allow you to think it's okay to break any of these rules.